how exactly do you know if your mix sounds professional? Well, you never actually know until you have somewhat of a reference to compare your mix to. So in essence, I'm going to show you how to mix using visual reference today. Let's dive in. Okay, here's a track that I'm currently working on. And here's a reference track that I completely vibe with, that I really enjoy, so I decided to take it as a reference today. It's called Peregi by Gratch. So the reason I chose to import this reference track is simply because I love it. I love the way it makes me feel. I love the way it sounds. And I don't even know the technical aspects of this mix, right? I, I just feel like it sounds good. Let's say we want to get our mix to sound similar to the track that we've imported here. How do we do that? And I know we're comparing our mix to a master track, but that's absolutely okay because in mastering, you usually just want to pull up the gain on the limiter until you get that right loudness standard, right? Until it's loud enough to be released on all platforms. So during mastering, there shouldn't be that much coloration going on. So it's completely okay to compare our mix to this master. We just need to make sure that they're both in the same volume. And that's what we're going to do now. So on our reference track, we are going to load up the following plugins. Utility. Then we have a free plugin called Yulin Loudness Meter. The last free plugin is called Voxingo Span. So these three effects are now on our reference track that I have loaded up in here. So copy these three go to the master track and paste them here. So we basically have the same effects on the master and the reference track. Second thing you want to do is make sure that the reference track is not going into the master, but it's still coming out of your speakers. And we're going to change that to external out. There are my two speakers, external one, two, both master and reference are coming out of speaker one, two. So they're coming out of my main speakers here, but the reference track isn't being put through the mastering chain. Next thing you want to be able to do is to flexibly switch the solo button on off without always going back to the solo button. So I'm going to hit command K, which is key map. You can also right click and edit key map. And what I'm going to do is then click solo button and then click a button on my keyboard that I rarely use. And I rarely use these plus minus multiply buttons here. So I'm going to just click on multiply, hit escape. And whenever I click multiply now, it's going to solo the track so I can compare my track. Hit multiply. So we basically get to jump back and forth between our track and the reference track just by hitting a short keyboard command. Now we want to get an overall estimate of how loud our track is so we can pull down the mastered reference to the exact same volume. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to put the frequency... <laughs> <laughs> the curves on the exact same level so we can compare the frequency curves. So what I'm going to do is play our track at its loudest point, which is usually the build up into the drop. Open up our master. Make sure that Yulin loudness meter is also opened up. Hit X to reset all parameters and hit play. Build up, build up, build up. Now the loudest point of our track is here. Let it play, let it play. paying attention to this value here, integrated loudness. This is average. Let it play, let it play. Okay, that should be enough. So now I know that my track in average is minus 17.3 dB LUFS loud. The integrated loudness matters here. Now we're gonna do practically the same for the reference track. So we're gonna solo the reference here. These are pre-faders. So no matter how I pull down this track over here, it'll still detect the overall volume without depending on the fader on the track. You see, I'm changing this, but it doesn't change the LUFS value. We're gonna do that with the gain in a second. Again, let's play our track at its loudest point here, our reference track, hit X. So our reference track has an average loudness of minus 9.8 dB LUFS. So I'm going to make sure to write that down in a reference note here. So reference equals minus 9.8 dB LUFS. And our track was around minus 17 dB LUFS. The exact number doesn't really matter. I just like to have an estimate. So what we're going to do is then open up our calculator and then type in 17 minus 9.8. 
8, 7.2. That means we have to pull down our reference by minus 7.2 dB LUFS. So what I'm going to do is click on the reference track and type in minus 7.2 on the gain. Now I'm going to solo the reference track and reset the Yulin loudness parameters. Hit play. So it should be around minus 17 dB LUFS. Oh, oh. Perfect. So now we have loudness matched our track with our reference. They're both exactly the same loudness. So now what we want to do is open up our master track over here. And something that I forgot to mention is that on the master track, you want to make sure to use the VST version of span. So I'm going to delete this one here and load up VST version, not VST3, not the AU, the VST version, because the VST version allows us to route in a sidechain input track. Therefore, we're going to select our reference. Make sure that it's on post effects because pre effects and post mixer don't work. So if we hit play now, you can see a green frequency curve. That is our track. But where's the reference? We want to see the reference here too. So under underlay, I'm going to select G3 simply because I like the color on G3. I could also select G2, G4, but G3 is what I'm going to go with now. We're going to go into routing. On input three, we're going to select track three. Track three is always the sidechain track. So it doesn't really matter where you put track three. You could also put it here, here. But what matters is that you just select track three here in the input section and make sure that these two are aligned. So now you see under track three, it's G2. Since we set the underlay to G3, we're going to have to change the underlay here also to G3. So input three is aligned with group assignment three. You see? Now if I hit play. Oh, huh. I get to see my frequency curve, which is green and the reference frequency curve, which is blue. And now if I hit play again and then hit hold here, pause the tracks, I get to dissect the frequency curve of my track and the reference track. And I get to really dial in on each and every single frequency range. So around 200 Hertz, I can see that there's quite a bit of difference here between my track and the reference. Bass frequency looks very well aligned. I feel like there's a bit more action going on in 100 Hertz here. Mine has a slight dip. In the higher end frequency, I feel like it's doing a great job. It's just that my hi-hats are a slight bit quieter than the reference track. And that's just the absolute amazing thing about mixing visually. And we know that this is giving us accurate results because we set both of the the tracks to the same loudness so we can fine tune the individual elements. All right, so I'm going to give both tracks another playthrough here in the part where I feel like they are both the loudest. So it should be this one over here. Let's disable hold. Let's let it play for a bit, okay? I'm going to wait until the melodies kick in over here, the bass stabs. Pay attention to both of these frequency curves. Uh -huh very well aligned. Melodies are here. Let's compare to our reference. Ah, also some melodies here. See? Gonna hit hold again. In the sub frequency range between 65 Hertz and the low mid frequency range, 300 to 350 hertz, you can see that the difference between frequencies is quite large here. And the elements that are usually in here is the tom and the bass. So we can then go back to our mix and then solo the elements that are within that frequency range, like tom and bass, you see. Disable hold, and now we can just increase those elements until we feel like they match. So highlight both of these, increase a bit. Disable solo. See how they're matching a bit more. Uh huh. Let's solo our pad now. Uh huh. So we see the pad sits in the mid range of the mix. And if we hit control or command and scroll on our mouse wheel, we can dial in on individual frequencies. What I can also do is play a different section of the reference track. For example, here I see there's less going on, no kick and bass because it's a break. And I can compare that to the break of my track. So let's again open up the master track here and see what's going on in Voxango. Ah, okay. 
so I can see in, in his break there's no bass information, so it might make sense to take out the bass for me here. So a bit more mid-range going on, so that means that in this section I can maybe tune up the pad, so you can add like a gain automation on the pad. Maybe make it really quiet here, tune up the gain over here, maybe by like 5 dB. Match more. Quite a lot going on in here. You see, those are the percussions. So, what I could do is then in this section perhaps tune down the percussions. So, on the top's percussion group, I'm going to load up a utility, mixing utility, and do a bit of gain automation for the percussions. I'm going to just dial down the perks whenever the break hits, right? Dial them down even more like this. Uh huh. And in the build up, you see an, a slight increase in white noise, so we can add in those higher frequency percussions again. You see how the frequency curves align much more? Yeah, pretty awesome strategy. And you can do this for every track, just to get an overview of how the frequencies look like. How loud is my bass? How loud is his bass? How loud are my hats? How loud are his hi-hats? I've analyzed quite a few tracks, a couple hundred along my few years of making music, and I find out that EDM, or tracks within melodic techno, organic house, they usually have a frequency curve that looks like this. So the bass frequencies and hi-hats are mostly aligned. They're mostly on one similar level. And in the 200 to 500 hertz region, you have a few melodic peaks that come through every now and then, but they don't dominate the frequency spectrum. And in the mid-range, they're usually usually isn't a lot going on. So I would call this curve the EDM average. And there's a ton of different frequency curves. If you listen to the Christian Leffler type of style, you figure out that he has more melodies in his mix because his style is obviously very much dominated by melodies. And if you listen to ambient music, you'll get a frequency curve that looks something like this, right? Because it's highly dominated by the mid-range frequencies, little less highs, maybe not as much low end. So I highly recommend that you just import tracks into your DAW, load up up that Voxengo span to just get an idea of how the frequency curve looks like. Does it look more like the EDM average over here or does it look more melodic? Does it contain more of those melodies in that mid-range frequency over here? Just practice this over and over and using the methods that I've shown you today you can really get those frequency curves aligned as much as possible. And remember it doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to have that mix one-to-one -one like your reference but it helps you to get an idea of the levels of your track. Thanks for watching this video. Hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel's growth. Yerevan coming out this Friday and this project file I'm gonna make available on Patreon. See you in the next video. Peace.